the Orange Bowl, Georgia 34, Michigan 11. And this one, uh, good gracious, the the numbers on this. Uh, Georgia had 518 total yards. 328 of that was passing. So for everybody that wanted to talk about Stetson Bennett and whatnot, he showed out in this game. 21 out of 31, 310 yards passing, three touchdowns, zero picks. He also ran three times, or scrambled, whatever you want to call it, for 32 yards. This was not a Georgia, you know, running the football down their throat, anything like that. This was Georgia's defense shut down Michigan, and Michigan had no idea what to expect from Georgia's offense. It was just as clear as day. Uh, you look at the drives, the Georgia goes right down the field and scores a touchdown. And then Michigan went right down the field and and then they don't get that you know they turn the ball over on downs that changed the game if they score right there i think it's a completely different ball game and that's exact not to say thing. yeah it's not to say georgia wouldn't have won that's right but it just changes the per, the the perception of the entire it, thing it was the exact same way the alabama cincinnati game was Yes. I thought, man, we're about to get exactly what we almost got there. Michigan couldn't get it in. And then I thought, well, that's it. And and, and I I literally, I told everybody, I told you guys, I told everybody, I said, listen, I got two more drives in me. Okay. I'm going to watch Georgia do what they just did, drive and score. And if Michigan doesn't drive and get a touchdown, I'm out. I'm out. I'm not wasting. I'm not wasting the rest of this night watching this damn game. (laughs) Because so, of some bullshit, and exactly what happened, yes, happened. Yes, in the second quarter. And so, it, Georgia scored on their first five possessions. Touchdown, touchdown, field goal, field goal, touchdown. So, I mean, it was 27 In Michigan's to, to first three. five possessions, they had a field goal. Yes, a field goal, a turnover on downs, and they did have two interceptions, a fumble, and two other turnovers on downs. And then finally, their last possession, they scored a touchdown. So, it, it, was, it was not as close as 34-11. to 11. It was a beating. Uh, Georgia figured out very quickly. At, at Kirby, I think, started coaching for the Alabama game midway second quarter, I guess, somewhere around there, or maybe at about halftime. So <laughs> did you hear his comment after the game uh, about Alabama got a four-hour or six-hour head start on us or yeah. whatever? <laughs> yeah, I need to get a shower and get to work. Alabama got a five-hour head start. Just ridiculous. <laughs> I love it, though. You know, the the storylines that will come out of this national championship game, uh, one, I do think, well, well, we'll hit on that here in a minute. The postgame win expectancy for Georgia was actually 98%, which how Alabama's was 100% and Georgia's was 98 I have no idea because I feel like Georgia mashed Michigan a little more than Alabama did since he. Yep. But... When you look at all the missed opportunities for Michigan, they they were able to get some drives going, and you know they did have the it, so beginning of the third quarter, eleven play fifty six yard drive that ends in an interception, which Nicobe Dean, by the way, linebacker for Georgia, absolute freak of nature again. Now he didn't show out in the Alabama game nearly as much, but against Michigan, he did what he has done all year. This kid is absolutely ridiculous. You know where so, he's from? Uh, Horn Lake, Mississippi. Right down the road, baby. <laughs> right down the That's street. That's right. You better believe he is a, it. He is, he is an absolutely local kid. So Yes. So, turnover on downs for Michigan. They had a seven-play, 34-yard drive that turned over on downs. They had a 11-play, 56-yard drive that ended in an interception. They had a uh, seven-play, 31-yard drive that was a turnover on downs in the fourth quarter. Another drive in the fourth quarter, 15 plays, 69 yards turnover on downs, uh, there there were missed opportunities for Michigan for them to at least keep this uh, a little bit closer. But when you start out the way that they did, I mean, at 27-3, to three, like, I mean, what are you even going to do? I mean, it was just, it was so ugly so quickly that I, I do think there were a lot of people that were happy that they could just go out and celebrate New Year's and not have to worry about this going down yes. to the wire. <laughs> no, yeah, this game, like I told you, I watched four drives, and yeah. then I kept checking back in, kept popping in, and nothing was different. Yeah, I said, okay, uh, it was it was putrid. I mean, I, not wasting my I, time. I really focused until about midway through the second quarter, and at that point, it was okay. What what am I doing here? Like I, I started working on IKEA shelves and and all this so, other mess. 
Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.